Good afternoon, everyone. I think uh, the time has arrived for the beginning of our meeting. We'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, Zoom session of the Mesa City Council study session for May the 4th. Uh, I can see by my screen that all of our council is present and uh, participating in this meeting. So welcome, council. Uh, the first item on our agenda for this meeting is to review the agenda for our uh, meeting that will follow this one, our regular council meeting. So, uh, council, please refer to that document. I know we went over it on Thursday, but uh, Mr. Brady, have there uh, been any changes to this agenda? Any with any anything off of the agenda or anything that uh, you think we ought to know about? Uh, Mr. Brady, I think I'd heard that maybe a, one of the agenda items was being removed from this agenda. Is that the case? There we go. There we go. Oh. I think we're having some trouble with the uh, with the audio on uh, coming out of the council chambers. Okay. There we go. There we go. Yep. We can hear you now, Mr. Brady. Thank you. We, can, we could not hear you, so thank you. I'm oh. sorry, Mayor, we have no idea what, where we are in the meeting at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Let me, uh, we, uh, I, well, I did a, a warm welcome for everyone, and then we uh, started in on the agenda for tonight's meeting. Oh. And I was in, uh, the, my, I'm under the impression that there might be an agenda item or two that has been removed from our agenda for tonight. Can you update us on that? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, we need to uh, withdraw item 4F. Uh, just, just some corrections on the agenda item. There's actually two vendors we need to acknowledge. So we'll just withdraw that and we'll bring it back at a future date. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have uh, Ms. Mickelson back in the uh, the city clerk's uh, chair tonight? I'm here. Well, welcome, Hi. welcome back. We hope you're having a speedy recovery. I know you uh, you had a uh, little broken bone problem in your in your leg. I hope you're feeling better. A little bit. I'm better. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Uh, Deanne, earlier you indicated there was one person who may have submitted a, uh, a card on an item on the consent agenda, but. Uh, Correct me, I think that individual did not ask that the item be agenda, removed from the agenda. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So uh, which agenda item? Is, I, it's probably good that we note that that card was received. Did, did that person ask for their name to be read or, or any, any other information to be shared? They, did, they just said they did not want their comments read. Um, the uh, individual that submitted the speaker card, was, it was for item 5F. His name is John Hobby, and he opposes that item. But he did not want his. He did. He did submit comments, but he did not want them read. Okay. So he indicated on his card that he did not want to remove from the consent agenda. He did not want his his comments read, but uh, that he was opposed to the item. Correct. Correct. Okay. So I believe then we'll just make that note at the beginning of the consent agenda that uh, that that individual that did uh, submit that card. Uh, but we'll continue to, leave, unless the council uh, instructs otherwise, we'll just leave it on the consent agenda. Uh, council, do you have any questions or uh, any additional information you'd like regarding anything on tonight's uh, formal agenda? Yes, uh, council member Duff. Um, I don't want to take anything off consent, but I just wanted to uh, do a quick shout out to the library services for eliminating the overdue fees. I think it's a great thing for our community to expand our literacy and engagement. So I just wanted to personally say thank you for um, making that arrangement in our budget. Amen. Okay, Council, anything else on uh, tonight's agenda that you would like to get additional information on or any questions? So as it looks, uh, as it sits, uh, there, we have no items off of the consent agenda today. Okay. Uh, the next item then on our agenda for this meeting, assuming I can find that, Oh, we do have some awards and recognitions today. Uh, some of them are pretty noteworthy. Uh, 
and I'll, I'll tell you about them in, in just a minute. But for example, um, uh, Waymo contributed $100,000 to the state's uh, COVID relief fund. You know, some really, some really uh, outstanding things going on in our community. Uh, but again, the next item on our agenda for this meeting is item two. That's to hear a presentation and provide direction on the 2021 fiscal year budget summary, adoption process, and financial forecast. You may recall this was continued from our uh, study session last Thursday. Uh, Mr. Brady, uh, I know you've got some staff members that are ready to present on this topic. Yes, thank you, Mayor. So we're going to present to you both the uh, proposed budget uh, and we're also going to review, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> review with you a uh, at least a first uh, attempt at looking at a forecast going forward. Um, I'll just share with the council, this is probably my entire career. This is the one time I can tell you that as we proposed a budget, we really have no confidence in the numbers. Uh, we just don't know how what's happening in the economy right now. Um, but we are, so we're essentially rolling over last year's budget with just a few um, items that are obvious that we've made impacts as far as adjustments for public safety programs. Otherwise, we just want to share with you what we, how we're looking at the, uh, what we're looking at for this coming year and the years ahead. Um, you'll notice that um, there are some changes uh, that we've made adjustments to, but again, we really just don't know. Our proposal is that we present to council the proposed budget um, and take action on that um, according to state law, uh, because we're at that time of year when we have to do that, but that we come back frequently to council to review uh, information that we get. We're still waiting to get the information even from the March sales tax, which we should have uh, sometime this month. But even going forward, um, the impacts of the uh, pandemic on our budget will be further uh, you know, made known to us as we identify the impacts during March and April. And then certainly as um, we reemerge from this, we'll have to see how fast that happens and, and make adjustments accordingly. Um, so um, then the, just a reminder also, and this will come up in the presentation is, there are some revenues, significant revenues that we receive from the state um, that are delayed in receipts to the city by two years. Uh, so this year and next year, we're still receiving, in the proposed budget, we're receiving revenues that were collected two years ago. Um, so the, the full impact of the uh, pandemic uh, to us will not happen for another two years. And you'll see that in the forecast. Um, and so just keep that in mind as we, we look at budgets, not just what's happening next year, but over the next uh, three to four years uh, so that we can make adjustments if needed ahead of time. So we're not doing dramatic, having to make dramatic changes in our budget um, in any one particular year. So. With that, I'll have Candace and Brian uh, make their presentations. Good evening, Mayor and Council. And as, as uh, Mr. Brady said, it's really two conversations that we're having today. One is to really just review the fiscal year 2021 budget, where we're at, and um, what, how we're going through the process of adopting that budget, and then coming back and making adjustments or modifications to that budget as we get uh, better numbers on the revenue side. Um, just to refresh everyone's memories, as we look at it, uh, cities are required to do annual budgets. So each year you're required to adopt or appropriate an annual budget as well as adopt a property, secondary property tax levy. So those things will be going forward over these next couple of weeks. A budget is required to be balanced. What balanced means is that we have the sources necessary to meet the expenditures that we include in the budget. Um, and so the budget before you, the 2021 budget, and on your agenda for tonight is a tentative adoption of that budget is a balanced budget for the fiscal year 2021. What we did um, going forward is really not make any adjustments to where we are today. So we took the operations as of today um, in the city and adjusted those for the um, salaries and so forth. So you'll see things, any mid-year positions that were added last year um, are already here and working, and so those are in the budget, as well as any just changes to the personnel. So changes in salary, changes in medical costs, pension costs, those types of things have all been recalculated. So again, it's the city as it's operating today, only with next year's uh, financial numbers or costs to them. The only significant changes between the adopted 1920 budget and the proposed 2021 budget is in the public safety area, and that is mainly due to the addition of the public safety sales tax. 
and the implementation of those positions related to that particular tax as we go through those. In the police department, you see we just kind of uh, summarized them here for you today as 23 sworn positions and seven civilian positions are included in that public safety sales tax. Those are new positions that were either added during the year this year or were already proposed for next year as part of their implementation schedule. In fire and medical department, same thing. We have 15 new and 12 reallocated sworn positions that are included in the public safety sales tax. Again, this is part of the implementation plan of that particular sales tax. We will be looking at this funding source going forward as part of the forecast. Um, this is really just the first year, year one and year two of these implementation plans. And so at this point, um, we don't feel that these positions are in danger with the current revenue forecast for sales tax, but we'll be looking at the remainder of the positions as part of the forecast review that we do in the next uh, month. On the general fund side for fire and medical, we also have some changes that happened over the course of the 1920 year, and we have um, included them here for your reference because they are changes from the uh, adopted 1920 budget to the proposed 2021 budget. Another area. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Thompson has a question for you. While we're on uh, public safety, I want to make sure that as we as we start getting the numbers coming in and we understand what our budget's going to be, that we're not using um, the sales tax to supplant the positions from that are currently funded, either through the transfer from the enterprise fund or through the general fund. Um, I just wanna make sure that, because I think the intent, or at least from the, the, the citizen's perspective, uh, the intent was that the sales tax is for increased number of positions, not to supplant um, the general fund. So I just want to make sure that that's the case uh, going forward, especially as we start learning the numbers. So as as people retire, those don't just those positions don't just get filled with um, with positions from the sales tax, but they get filled. Uh, you know, as they normally would be filled, either, as I said, either through the transfer of the, the enterprise fund or directly through the general fund. Well, Mayor and Council, that, if, I guess the math on that may be difficult because if we only use the sales tax for new positions and we don't have the money, it doesn't really matter. The money's, it's gonna impact the sales tax numbers too. And if we don't have money to fill uh, retired positions, it's all kind of one and the same. So we don't know if it's gonna get that bad. I hope it doesn't. I don't ho hopefully don't have to affect sworn, but it, it's going to somehow, if we have to make an adjustment by not filling positions, by not, um, if we have to delay staffing up fire stations or new substa police substations, um, at the end of the day, it's kind of doesn't, it, it's one it's one or the other, it doesn't really, calculate out, I mean, it, it's kind of the people that are being hired into the sales tax are working with those that are in the current funded general fund. If we choose to just keep funding new positions out of the sales tax, and then we have general fund vacancies, it's kind of ends that we end up in the same place. We have fewer positions ultimately. So it doesn't really, the math as far as the number of positions wouldn't change. Well, and I know that, um, you know, public safety is obviously our, our, our largest nut to crack. And, um, you know, they're the, the biggest number in our budget. Uh, but I just want to make sure that, you know, as, as, you know, especially District 5 and District 6, we're going to continue to grow. And as we continue to grow, we can't have less and less first responders in our districts. Um, you know, and I, and I think that was one of the, one of the things the citizens uh, told council member Luna and I, um, you know, during the sales tax, um, when I was on the ballot was, you know, we need more public safety officials out here. We want to make sure that our response times remain uh, consistent with the rest of the city. And so to do that, we can't reduce our numbers. And, uh, and I know, I know the budget's going to be the budget going is going to be hard to to balance and get us there. I know we have to try to find ways to cut spending and 
you know, and we've you've done a really a great job in the past, Chris, of doing that, finding ways. I just want to make sure that we're not drawing down our public safety uh, personnel. Again, Mayor and Council, I, I just don't want to take anything off the table because, as you said, if 70% of our budget is public safety and we have to make up $25, $30 million, that means the, all the programs that are non-public safety would be significantly impacted. And so we try to, that's why you'll see when we talk about making reductions, we're asking the non-public safety to look at a 10% reductions and public safety at 5%. Um, and so we will do everything we can, but in the past, in the last significant downturn, we essentially made the decision not to fill some positions for a while uh, on, the, on the public safety side until the economy recovered. I don't know that we're gonna have to do that this time, um, but I just won't want to take anything off the table because if we say everything except for public safety, then that means I have to go back to the part departments that are not public safety and ask them for significantly more plans for reductions. And a lot of the programs we're talking about that are shut down today would never be opened again. So my point is give us the option to bring back everything and then we can evaluate them on their merits. But if I mean, public safety is absolutely the number one priority. That's why they're 70% of the budget. But if we only try to balance the budget off of non-public safe, public safety, then you know those are dramatic impacts to those departments that are already being impacted right now today. Okay, thank you. I know Mr. Freeman had a question as well. Chris, uh, based on uh, Mr. Thompson's comments, are we, how's our hiring process? Are we on track to hire the right amount, number of personnel in our public safety uh, program with the uh, public safety tax? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't, at this point, we haven't delayed any of the, the hiring, um, but at some point, we, again, you're gonna see numbers where we're gonna have to decide, you know, it's, it's and again, to me, this is not an issue of uh, we can never fill those positions. I think we have to ask ourselves a question is how fast do we want to move? When the economy was at a different pace and a different volume, uh, we had a certain specific schedule of when we were bringing new positions on and as we fill, kept up with the, the attrition rate, we also had the schedule of when we were bringing positions on. I can tell you that's gonna change. Even if, um, we don't have to make reductions. The amount of sales tax coming in from the public safety sales tax has been dramatically impacted. And so we're gonna to have to make adjustments on that side. Because even if you said, well, I mean, we can only hire, we can't commit, we made a commitment to hiring so many positions from the public safety sales tax at a certain pace. Well, that's been dramatically um, impacted. So we're gonna to have to come back and adjust that um, because we thought we could collect, I forgot how much, in five years, the number was sales so tax. Public safety sales tax is about 25 million, million. Year. 25 million a year. We're not going to be there now. So we're going to have to look at a scaling back and adjusting positions. Uh, and when we're going to do that now, the fact that we made the decision a month or so ago to de delay, not cancel, but delay the um, station. 20, 222. So 222 public at public safety complex. That'll help us. But again, the general fund and the public safety sales tax are both, are both being dramatically impacted and our capacity to fill or keep up with the same number of new positions will be impacted also. And so we're gonna have to come back at some point on an operational side and what does that mean as far as new fire stations and new positions for police? Okay, thank you. I know more information will be coming down the pipe. So thank you. Thank you. I th uh, Candace, please proceed. Okay. And then the last, the last area that there are significant differences between the current adopted budget and this upcoming budget is in our medical transport program, which is really just getting off the ground. And so the 2021 budget still includes the anticipated expansion of that program that includes personnel and equipment. And those are in a separate fund, that uh, transport program's in a separate from, from the general fund. Here we just have a really an overview. We're not gonna spend time on the numbers. We just wanna make sure that we're giving you the numbers as they appear in the 2021 budget. We have changed the local sales tax and the state shared revenue 
uh, revenue estimates based on the last uh, forecast that we gave you, and we'll go over it a little bit more today at the end of this presentation. Um, but those have been updated. So the revenues have been updated with our uh, first pass at what the effect is gonna be on the recession, and we'll continue to look at those and update those throughout the year. Um, also the expenses, here's just a summary of the expenses. Again, these expenses are not uh, modified. So this is again, the operations as it exists today in the city, just updated for the cost of what those would be for the 2021 fiscal year. And then as we put that together, the normal uh, charts that we show you, which is our net sources and uses. So those are sources available with our uses. Um, for that and our fund balance is at the bottom. So you can see because we have um, a fund balance that is a significant fund balance over the eight to 10% for our financial policies, we're able to draw that down or at least to on paper, draw that down even farther for 2021 that allows us to adopt the budget as is. And then we can come back and make modifications to make sure that we are sustainable into the future going forward. And those will come later as we come back but we want to set, this is where it sets us for 2021, even with the expenses as they are today and the adjusted revenues of our first pass, we're still sitting at about a 14.1% anticipated fund balance if we were to not change anything. But we want to make sure we're sustainable, not just sustainable for one year. And that's why we'll be coming back and talking about modifications that we'll be making or be recommended. Thank you, Candace. Uh, Mr. Thompson has a question. Sorry, Candace, going back, I, I um, Going, going back to our operating sources, the, the sources of funds, I know that state shared revenue has always been mm -hmm. uh, a topic of, of discussion, a topic of debate um, when it comes to, you know, our cities getting their, their fair shares and are they getting the full amount? Did we, did, was, our, was what we received um, in state shared revenue, was that above or below what we had budgeted? What we received for this fiscal year and for, for 1920? Yes. It was within a, we're, yeah, we're, we're within budget. Right in the same, you can see the budgeted number was 65.7 and we projecting 65.8. So just slightly above? Yeah, and so remember, those are two year, those are um, numbers from Correct. two years ago. So that's why the good news is for next year, you can see the tentative budget for that same line, urban revenue sharing is actually going up 73.8, but that's because those were collected in 18? Correct, two, yeah. year, two years ago. Two years ago. And then also you'll see on our state sales tax, because we do uh, revenue sharing on that as well with the state, and the state sales tax is actually showing a little bit better than the local, and that's really just a timing issue on when they report and when we receive that money versus our local money that we receive right away. And so you can see those if you kind of follow those across. So we have three different areas of state shared, of, of state shared revenues. And Brian's gonna go over that a little bit more um, with their actual forecast, not only of this year, but then going out three years to see what that looks like. Um, and one thing that we have in that urban revenue sharing, if you look in fiscal year 2021, again, that urban revenue sharing number is a known number. And that includes that seven and a half million dollars that we talked about previously, which is really a one-time bump. It's not a new level. Um, it was a one-time bump based on a tax, uh, tax reform at the federal level and, and coming down to the state. So there's a one year that we're gonna get that. That won't happen in 21-22. It'll go back down to the normal, to normal levels. So we have anticipated that in our forecast as a one-time, um, and you'll see that as we go through. Well, in 2021, is it, is it fair to say that um, that will probably exceed our budgeted or uh, our, um, um, yeah, our budgeted amount, I guess, for on, on the state shared revenue side? Or, or are we trending upwards? I mean, it looks like we are um, project, you know, um, projected and versus, or I'm sorry, the, the budgeted this year versus tentative for next year, it looks like there'll be some bump. So are we expecting that we're going to see an increase in state shared revenue? For uh, Mayor and Councilmember Thompson, for fiscal year 2021, we do see a bump in state shared revenues due to the urban revenue sharing, which is income tax. And again, that was what was collected two years ago. So it's a known number for next year. So that's where the bump is coming from. It's a one-time bump in the income tax for 2021. Does that make sense? 
So yeah, so there is, so the rest of it is, you can see is relatively stable as you look at our 1920 projections for state sales tax at about $51 million for this year. And then next year we're showing 51.3. That does include the impact, our current uh, estimate for the impact on the uh, current recession and then coming out of that recession over the next year. Thank you, Candace. Uh, Council member Duff, I have a I'll come back. Okay. And just, and, and on that note, uh, Mayor and Council, I don't want to get too far into the numbers here, only because I'm going to, you know, take away all the glory from Brian on his forecast. Um, but this is really kind of setting up what's in the budget for next year for 2021, where we're sitting at for revenues. Um, and then Brian's going to go into kind of the next three years, because again, we don't want to look at a budget what, just one year at a time. We have to adopt an annual budget, but we want to make sure we're sustainable over time. So there's one conversation is we have to adopt the 2021 budget, and this is what we've included in at this point. And then Brian's going to talk about, but what do we do the next three years? What does it look like? What does our current forecast look like? And therefore, how do we react to this recession will be as we come back a month from now, it's based on our forecast. So I'm sorry, my, my um, question was going to be, as we start looking at the general, at the forecast summary, general government forecast summary, with the, our ending reserve balance is at 14%, a little over 14%, 14.1%. So this is as, as, as though the, the COVID crisis didn't hit and we were functioning properly. Is that correct? Well, may it count? Mayor Council, may not, not quite. This has, this has been adjusted on the revenue side. It has not been adjusted on the expense side. But, but look at the number you need to pay, you'll pay attention to, and you'll see what, where our in, um, structural imbalance is. If you see net sources and uses, that's starting to grow. And what help, what's helps us next year is the state shared revenues that are coming in from two years ago, which includes a one-time bump because of uh, tax law changes. Um, that was, what, seven? Millions? Yeah, about seven million dollars and in, is included in there. That's a one-time bump, and we want it doesn't re reoccur. So that helps us with the reserves as far as the fund balance. But what the the structural imbalance is is between our annual expenses and our annual revenues. And you'll see how that continues to grow, and that's our biggest concern. It's well, and you'll see that that the impact that has on the reserves is it will continue to draw that fourteen percent down to a point where we need to be taking action now and not waiting till it goes below 8% or below 10%. So those are the, that's what we're trying to, uh, I think that's what you'll see when Brian makes his presentation. So, so are the total users, um, are the users, would those be contractual obligations that we have? Um, you know, for example, let's say landscaping or janitorial or, or those type, are those included uses in the users? Every, uses is just general, it's just another way of saying expenses. Expenses. It's all the so, fund expenses. So as we, as we go into the budget and we start getting, you know, the, the realistic numbers rolling in, we already know that we have to reduce our expenses. And so versus, um, versus impacting employees, could we not go out and start, um, re-looking at contracts and negotiating with vendors to say, you know, hey, you, you really need to sharpen your pencil and come back to the table with better contractual numbers, um, or, you know, we're just gonna have to go to the next person on the list and try to find um, a better cost. Uh, it's, it's inherent that a lot of people, you know, try to take advantage of government. Um, and I just wanna make sure that instead of impacting our employees, that we really start looking at the at the vendors that are providing services to the city, and have them just come back with with better, I guess, better costs uh, on behalf of our citizens. We could, but again, these numbers include all the contractual contractual relationships as well as salaries and the payroll costs, and most of the payroll costs. The payroll costs is what's driving most of this. Um, okay. The. Uh, you know, we, we have a, by state law, have to go through a very prescribed procurement process. So in theory, we've already negotiated those rates. And so for us to open those back up, we'd have to, it would take 
opening it up for everybody. We can't just go back to a specific contractor, but hopefully we're trying to do that every time we issue a contract. Uh, but these are really all inclusive. Um, the good news is um, we've started with a, we started with a healthy reserves and it's allowed us to absorb these impacts that we're, you're gonna see for the next couple of years. But at some point, you'll see the diminishment of those reserves. So our savings account, if under this current projection, if we do nothing, would have a significant impact uh, on how long our reserves would be sustainable. I, I just think that we're in, you know, we are really in unprecedented times. I mean, this is something we've never seen, you know, impact our city before. Uh, on such a short time frame, and so I just, you know, if we're talking about, you know, nothing being taken off the table, then I think absolutely we should be looking at. And I understand procurement; that's my side gig, um, working with people that working with those exact vendors that I'm talking about. Um, but I think there's an opportunity to restructure, uh, you know, to, to try to keep our costs down because I mean that's something that that I think every city should probably be looking at at some point in time. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Duff, did you have a question? No, it's been answered, thank you. Thank you. Uh, please proceed. Okay. Um, so Mayor and Council here on the 2021 is the 2021 budget calendar. And so just as a, to refresh everyone's memories of adoption of the budget, is tonight you're being asked to tentatively adopt the annual budget. What that does is that sets the maximum that the city could spend in the next year. We then go out and publish that. Uh, we have some publication requirements that we have to do. Then we'll then come back to you on May 18th for a public hearing. The public hearing will be, we'll be doing two public hearings that night. One is on the annual budget, the tentative budget, where either then you'll be asked to then adopt, do a final adoption of the budget. We'll also be doing a public hearing on the CIP as well and asking you to um, consider that one that evening as well and then we'll be coming back on june 1st to actually do the secondary property tax levy so those are the legal steps that we need to take there's three different dates the fourth the 18th and then back on june 1st and that will complete the fiscal year 2021 budget adoption process um, and then we can start focusing on modifications and updated uh, revenues for those um, that we'll be working on that's why we want to come back to you in june um, and start working on those. So kind of get this budget adopted and out of the way and then come back and work on um, updated revenues and modifications for expenditures. At this point, I'm gonna have Brian go ahead and um, walk through now the forecast. So that way really, that concludes the discussion on the adoption of the 2021 budget. Are there any questions before we go into the forecast side? Any questions on the adoption of the process that we need to go through? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yes, Jeremy, go ahead. I got one question on the uh, June one day. Are we able to, uh, as we get these sales tax numbers, do we, do we, re I know we're adopting a budget today. Is it possible to revise up or down the budget depending on how those sales tax numbers come in? Or if we pass this tentative budget today, are we stuck with those numbers? Um, Mayor, on the June. Sorry, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, what your uh, the tentative adoption sets the maximum. That's the ceiling. So we would not be able to increase the expenditure dollar amount for the budget for 2021, but we could reduce the number at any time. Great, thank you. So okay, thanks. So, so just to summarize, I think what, what this does, Candice, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, is this is kind of a placeholder budget. It places a ceiling on the budget. We're just going with last year's budget, so we can't spend more than that. But the floor of the budget will actually be based on our actual revenues as we see what the the impact of the uh, the COVID related uh, downturn in the economy is. Correct, correct, Mayor. And really, and really, it's not different than any other year. And the fact that every year we adopt a budget and that sets the ceiling. And any year we could have a change in our sales tax or a change in our revenues that may happen. And we might have to make adjustments during the year for that budget. It would be the same, the same rules of engagement would go on in any year as we're doing this year. This is just one of those years, the first year that we know that we're going to be making modifications to reduce the budget. Other years, we don't anticipate to do that. This year we do, that's the only difference. Okay, thank you. So mayor and council, uh, moving forward, 
The, the revenue forecast that I'll be presenting tonight assumes that beginning in ju this July, there will be a start a slow recovery uh, out of the recession. And then with a uh, increase in activity in sales tax and revenues in September and October, and then slowly moving up from there. What we'll do is we will uh, continue to monitor the economic situation that we have at hand and then update uh, city management and council as needed. So this, this graph shows the general governmental revenues forecast. So what we've done is we've included, as I mentioned, we've included the, how the recession is going to affect the sales tax. So as you notice, the, there's the big dip in projected 1920. That includes a revenue, uh, the revenue loss of the, uh, the recession. But then with the tentative 2021, it kind of slowly growing back out of there on the city sales tax. That uh, the, the bump, the slight increase you see in actuals for 1819, that is due to the beginning of the uh, public safety sales tax uh, the city was getting. So with that, that still includes in that the, the low part of the, uh, the graph there. And then the bump in 2021 for the state shared, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Brady mentioned, uh, that is the one time seven and a half million, about seven and a half million uh, bump that we get, the one time money from the urban revenue sharing the, the state income tax. And then as he also mentioned, that the effect of the recession and the, the, uh, the jobless rates and everything else, the furloughs, that is that dip that you see on the red line in the forecast for 22-23. That is the effect, that's the two year lag of the urban revenue sharing. So moving on to the local sales tax, this shows the year over year comparison of the city sales tax activity so the green line is our current fiscal year. And as of February, it is known, but then you see the dotted, the green dashed line. That upper one is what we were forecasting if the recession did not happen. The bottom dashed green line is our current forecast that we are forecasting with the effect of the uh, recession in there. And as you notice down on the, on the left side, the purple dashed, is our forecast for the local city sales tax for coming for 2021. And you see that starting, kind of the recovery starting in July, moving up August, September, and then uh, going up in October and then coming back. So then go into a little bit more detail of the state shared. There's three parts to the state share. There's the state income tax, the state sales tax, and then the vehicle license tax. And here's a little closer look of the state income tax. As you see, the, the big hump there in tentative 2021, that is due to the uh, tax changes and that one-time uh, revenue that we'll be receiving. But then out in the 22, 23, 23, 24, you'll see that the lower dip, and that is uh, uh, where the, uh, the effect of this recession on the income tax will uh, affect the city's revenues. So putting that together, here's the, a continuation of the forecast summary that Candace uh, pr uh, presented. This shows the next three years of that. And as, as mentioned, this does, so the revenues, the, the sources include what we have been forecasting of the economy right now with the recession and then a recovery out of the recession. And the total uses includes uh, what we have, what. Uh, Candace presented as the tentative adopted budget for 2021, and then uh, the, the growing expenses, the uses out there. So as uh, the, uh, Mr. Brady indicated, what we like to focus on is the middle of the, uh, the table where it says net sources and uses, as yes, the forecast in 2021 uh, and on, it does increase, and out in 22, 23, 22, 23 and 23, 24, you see it goes to a negative 23 million and a negative 25 million. That's where the effect of this, uh, the recession and the recovery will, uh, will happen. And so as you notice that in 22, 23, we just meet the city's uh, financial uh, policy of 8% at ending reserve fund balance. But then in 23, uh, 24, we dip below that to a 3.2%.
And then this just is a graph just to show kind of the, uh, a picture of those, of that gap of the, the growing net sources, negative net sources and uses. The red line is the total uses of the forecast. And then the green line, dashed line, is our total sources. And as if you notice, the, the uses are growing uh, at a higher rate than our, our revenues. And that is a, a majority of that is due to the personal services, which is salaries, benefits. So moving on, the enterprise fund. The, so here's just a graph of, or a table of the enterprise fund history. So what we've done is with the, the ordinance that was passed by council, this is the old way that we would present it that included the non-utilities and the table of the net sources and uses and the reserve fund balance. But with the new ordinance, we have, the, the city has created now a utility fund and has moved the, uh, has reallocated the uh, other non-utility funds and with that, here is the new util the revised utility enterprise fund. So it has all the utilities, including the, the district cooling. So this is the sources forecast uh, that we've been that the departments have worked on just to, uh, for that. So the tentative adopted budget would be a total of uh, 330, 383 million in total revenues, and then the forecast moving out to uh, 22 or 23, 24 with uh, revenues increasing. And with that, here's a, the enterprise fund, the utility enterprise fund uses forecast. And this includes all of the operating uh, expenses, the maintenance also includes the transfers to, for the general fund, the debt service and capital. And then it also has, it shows previous and this one shows the, the pass throughs, the ECAF and PINCAF. And putting those two together, this uh, shows the net sources and uses of those utilities. And the net sources and uses with the, the reserve fund balance, uh, it's the, the negative stays pretty consistent at uh, about 11 to 13 million. And the, uh, but if you notice the percentage of the, the uh, reserve fund balance does start decreasing uh, to as 23, 24 is the 15.1%. Uh, uh, so. That kind of, uh, Mayor and Council, that concludes the forecast overview. Are there any questions before we go on to our next steps? I don't see any. Okay. All right, so the question is, uh, what are our next steps from here? Again, remember, these are two conversations. One conversation is the actual adoption of the 2021 budget, and we're going to go ahead and take care of that in, in your next three meetings, including this evening. And, but then where do we go from there on actually adjusting the, the 2021 budget um, and any future budgets for ongoing expenses? So the thing that we have asked, and Mr. Brady mentioned this earlier, is we have asked all, um, all departments that have general fund um, fund, who are funded by the general fund. If they are a public safety department, that includes the police, the fire, and the municipal court. Um, we've asked them to put together a 5% reduction scenario. What would that look like? What would that entail? Um, including the priorities of that. And for non-public safety departments, we've asked them to do the same thing only at a 10% level of their operating budget. Again, what would that look like? What are the priorities for that? Um, We'll be working on that over the, they'll be working on that over the next couple of weeks and meeting with the city manager at that point. Um, the budget reductions at this time um, with our revenues as we are looking at them today, we're anticipating to need to implement half of the reduction scenarios starting in the first of the fiscal year. So starting in July, implementation based on what it is may take a while. Some things are easy to implement. Others require some time in order to do implementations. Um, and that would depend on what it is. So at this point, we're looking at about half of that. And we anticipate coming back to council at the beginning of June with those recommendations um, from the departments on what would be their, um, what would be their scenarios in order to meet the requirements of an operating sustainable budget going forward. I think that's it. And mayor and council, that concludes, mayor, that concludes our presentation tonight. If there's any additional questions, we'd be happy to answer those. Thank you, Candace.
Mr. Brady, anything else to add to that? No, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as Council knows, we have repurposed many of our employees, uh, which is actually, while well, it's taking them away from libraries and pools and recreation facilities that are closed, it's allowed us to keep them busy and they're contributing significantly, providing assistance to the residents, to the businesses in Mesa. And what we're hoping also is that we'll be able to recover some of those costs uh, through the Mesa CARES dollars. So that'll have a slight impact, but at least for the at least for now, for the next couple of weeks and maybe a couple of months, um, we're saving some dollars. Um, even though they're on our payroll, we're hoping to be able to seek reimbursement for some of those. Um, that will be considered more one-time dollars um, but at least it's, we hope it'll provide some relief for us um, as we try to make adjustments with this budget. Um, five, 10% doesn't sound like a lot, but then when you start talking about services and programs, and that's what we'll have to return to council with is what kind of programs, hours of facilities being open, uh, types of programs being offered, that, those are kinds of, of items that you'll see that we'll need in order to achieve the ongoing sustainable um, savings, as you saw that the real need for the reductions is in three years, four years out. And that's what we're working towards now. It's taking small steps, incremental steps to get there. And now everything I just said could be, we, we, and I guess the answer is we really don't know how bad it is. So it could be m more than that if we, ha we need to. I know some cities have asked for over 20% reductions from their departments. Uh, we haven't gone there yet. But if we don't, we'll have to just wait and see how this all, what this looks like and how fast the recovery is. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brady. I mean, that is obviously cause for concern. Uh, and I, I get that the, some of this is uh, as a result of the un, uh, unexpected events of the, of the COVID pandemic. And uh, that's out of our control. And so all we can do is, is hang on and do our best but it seems like there's, as you indicated, maybe some structural problems going forward, uh, you know, that are gonna surface more like the, in the 2024-23 budget that we might need to, uh, I think we need to reevaluate what, what can we do to generate additional revenue. And by that, I don't mean raising taxes. I mean, uh, be better at the ways that we generate revenue. We be better at having more utility customers, be better at, uh, having uh, you know not being the uh, at the at the at the bottom of the of the pile when it comes to per capita sales tax, you know have have more retail and more more mousetraps in our in our community. So uh, to me, this is a you know again points out that uh, let, let, let's get through the the current problems that we have, but I think we need to focus on how do we activate our downtown, how do we uh, do what we need to do. To uh, to turn that those projections uh, into something a little more optimistic, uh, Mr. Thompson, did you have a comment? I did. I, I uh, just wanted to ask, what is the what is the council's flavor on um, on pinning a, a letter to the governor asking to reopen or allow the cities to uh, be the better judge of reopening? our businesses. I, I noticed that uh, the city of Chandler pinned a, a, a letter, I believe it was last Friday or it may have been today, to the governor asking that they be allowed uh, to, to be the better guide and be the better judge of opening uh, their own businesses across their city and their own parks and their own aquatic centers and so forth. And I just kind of wanted to get the, the general flavor from council and see what, what our council thinks about uh, allowing a safe um, reopening of businesses outside of, of the governor's mandates, uh, what that would look like, um, and could we follow the CDC guidelines in, in doing so? Yeah, I'm not sure that that fits under this agenda item, uh, frankly. Uh, I mean, it's, an it's a well, great question. It, it, it has an impact on our budget, obviously. I mean, so that's kind of where, the, where I was fitting it in is, is that would be a revenue? Uh, I mean, that's that's the revenue for our city, right? That's uh, sales tax is where we get our 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 major portion of our revenue. So, 
Um, why wouldn't it fit in on, on this if we could open businesses, uh, get the businesses in Mesa open back up and, and people working, they're generating revenue for our city. Okay. Um, well, in, in that vein, uh, I was about to say this under the next agenda item, but let me point out that at three o'clock this afternoon, the governor had a press conference where he talked about uh, further lifting uh, restrictions on uh, the stay at home order. Um, and so I think we need to look at that. I mean, he, 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 I, I thought the governor's press conference was very positive. Uh, he talked about uh, how the, the data that uh, is being tracked, you know, per the, the White House plan uh, is, is trending all in, in good directions. So we've met the benchmarks that we need for, uh, you know, per the, the White House plan to start uh, easing the restrictions on the economy. Uh, he announced uh, that this Friday, uh, barbers and salons will uh, be open again. And on Monday, uh, in on-site restaurant uh, dining will be allowed again. Uh, he announced that uh, upcoming are the opening of, of gyms and pools. So uh, I am aware that Chandler wrote a letter last Friday uh, encouraging the governor to, to be more liberal in, in, uh, in taking the restrictions off of the economy. Uh, I don't know that that, that that letter deserves the credit for this, but I think today we saw that the governor did exactly that uh, and that he's indicated that uh, there's more to come. So um, I, for one, um, endorse what the governor did and, and don't feel uh, the need. Well, I, I, know that, I know what the governor's answer to that letter would be. Uh, he's, he'll respectfully decline uh, allowing the, the, the cities to, uh, to usurp what he sees as his authority. Uh, but I, I personally, I don't, I don't think that's necessary given that the governor continues uh, each week now to be taking additional steps to open up the economy. Um, anyone else like to weigh in on that? I got questions on some slides, but not on that specific subject. If anybody else wants to talk about that before we move on. No, so, so you have questions regarding the slides that Candace just went through? Yeah, slide 18 specifically. Okay. Uh, yes, please ask away. Um, can we pull back the slide 17? So... Uh, my question is with the gap, uh, sorry, not, not the PowerPoint 17. It's I, my apologies. It's actually slide 18. I messed up. Um, so I, obviously this structural imbalance that we have over spending more money than we're taking in, uh, th this is significantly growing this gap. W what exactly is our strategy or our plan to close that gap? Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, those are the plans that the departments have been asked to put together, their 5% and 10% reduction scenarios. And we'll be doing, reviewing those over the next month and coming back to council in the beginning of June with those recommendations on what actions to take. So this chart, um, it, this chart does not assume the 5% or the 10% the cut then, and, and is that correct? That's correct. There, again, uh, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, this, this chart reflects the fiscal year 2021 budget unaltered. So assuming no changes were made to the expenses, we've, all we've been, done is updated them with what the cost will be for next year. And then that then becomes the base of the forecast when it comes to our uses, meaning expenditures. So if those were to continue unadjusted, that's what this graph represents or this table represents. Um, so again, we won't be doing that. We'll be adjusting those, but those adjustment recommendations haven't come forward yet. The departments are working on those right now. And so if we adjust public safety by 5% and the rest of the departments by 10%, does that then switch uh, this forecast projection in which the green, li the green line is above the red line? Uh, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, we, we're estimating right now that that 5% and 10% scenario would be roughly around $20 million. So that would cause a $20 million reduction in the uses on that graph and on that chart. So does that make us, would that make us structurally balanced again if we did that or 
It would, um, Mayor and Councilman Whitaker, if you look out, we were at a negative 23 and a negative 25 in those out years. So if we were able to change about $20 million, that would put us within 5 million plus or minus. Um, and based on our revenue forecast as of today. So those would be things that we would continue to look at. And then as those, as those go, uh, years come forward and we look at those revenues and we estimate those revenues, we'd want to get down to zero, but we don't, it's not necessary for us to be zero four years out from now. Um, if we were f within five million four years out, I would consider that a balanced budget at this point, or sustainable, I should say. Okay, and on this slide that you have up, uh, this slide 17, um, so well, I guess I don't know the actual numbers, but I'm assuming then if we do these reductions, where does that put our uh, fiscal year 23-24 reserve balance percentage uh, wh where are we going to land if we if we in fact are able to reduce by those five and ten percentages uh, mayor and councilman Whitaker we'll we'll be looking at that it really depends on the implementation strategy so how long it would take us to implement it because we can't assume that even if we started in July um, some things take just a couple a month or a couple of weeks and other implementations take six months if we're waiting for retirements those types of things and that would accumulate uh, one-time savings as we go forward. So really, we would have a, um, the fund balance you can see is sustainable through 22, 23, as we still stay within the forecast, or excuse me, the financial policies of eight to 10%. So we have two to three years to ensure our sustainability and make sure that we always stay at least above the eight to 10%. So I can't give you a, 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 a strong figure or a hard figure on exactly where that'd be because it depends on the implementation process and how long that would take us to implement the reductions. I can say during the, during the Great Recession, some of the reductions that we did actually on the public safety side took us two years for, for full implementation of those reductions just because it had to be so deep that we, uh, we, did, we waited for attrition to go through that. We're not in that aspect today, but still that does make a difference on implementation, whether it's three months or six months or a year for us to implement something. Okay. Um, my next question, can we roll back to slide nine? Um, on slide nine, the, there's a line item called other and it shows a significant increase of 32% um, from 1920. What it, uh, can you just help me understand what is this uh, what is this other? What is this other line? Is that the is that the CARES Act money that we're anticipating? No, the CARES Act, uh, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker. The CARES Act is actually a grant. It's a federal grant, so it's going into a federal grant fund um, in separate lines. So it would not be showing in the general governmental. Um, the major areas in here, two um, two of the areas. One is the uh, payment in lieu of franchise fees coming from the utility funds, the utility fund into here. Uh, remember that that is an expense, not a transfer, so it doesn't show in a transfer line, it would show as an expense line, and that would be, so because it's an expense, it would show as a revenue, and that's why it shows in that manner. The other thing that's happening in here is it shows a little bit go, going up faster because in fiscal year 1920, or I should say in, in fiscal year 1819, we had some um, one-time money. We also use this for when we do our pay-as-you-go projects. So for example, our Advantage or our financial system upgrade was a pay-as-you-go project, the last upgrade we did. And we reserve that money in cash. And then when that, that project comes to fruition, then we release that money. And when we release that money, it shows up in this category as other revenues, because really it's released revenues um, that goes in. So some of our pay-as-you-go projects are in there as well. But those are the two main areas. When she says pay, so we set aside dollars for we know we have to change out large a projects. financial system or a technology, usually it's large upgrades on our technology side. We'll start putting side dollars years ahead of time and then when we spend it. We release it. Release it. Shows it. Us revenues. Yeah, we did sorry. it for police radios as well. We actually set money aside over three years knowing that we'd have to change out all the radios at one time. So we set money aside each year and then the year that we actually spend the money, we then release that money back into the general fund and then spend, and then spend that money. So that other category sometimes has that ebb and flow, but the major issue between 1920 and 2021 is the change in the uh, payment in lieu of franchise fees. What, what is the specifically uh, the payment in lieu dollar number for uh, 
1920 and, and then 2021. Well, in fiscal year 1920, there isn't a payment in lieu of franchise fees because that is new with the ordinance that was just passed. That's right. Now. So in fiscal year 1920, it's around $12 million. I'm sorry, in 2020. Uh, I think I missed it. I'm sorry. 2021, right? 2021, yes, I'm sorry. In 2021, it would be around $12 million. My notes just locked up on me, so uh, give me one sec. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on, Duke. Um, and on that slide nine as well, are we assuming that the the sales tax is going to go up 2.5 percent from 1920 uh, to 2021? I'm assuming that is because we're anticipating it to take a dip uh, this year due to COVID, but we're anticipating uh, some type of a full recovery uh, in 2021 on the sales tax side. Uh, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, that's correct. You can see that uh, graphically depicted in, what slide are you in, in the forecast? On the forecast portion of the slides, slide, sorry, I can't read it. In slide, on slide 15, you can see a graphical representation of that. And on yours, I know you can't read it on the, on the actual presentation, but we gave you the numbers at the bottom, knowing that most people would look at it digitally and you could expand it if you wanna see those closer. You can actually see our sales tax revenue estimates at the bottom. So if you look at that, you can see the drop. That's that green dotted line is the, the drop uh, in the forecast for this fiscal year. And then the purple dotted line that starts on the left over in July is our forecast for next year. So you can see that our current revenue forecast calls for us to start the, um, start the recovery in July. And really you can see over that course of time kind of bring it back up to hopefully to be back on track for Christmas. Again, this is our, we're being optimistic that the, the revenues will start to the recovery in July and, and be back on track in Christmas, probably lower than we would have been in, in any other years. So still a lower base, but at least kind of back to that normal cycle or normal schedule pattern, if you will. Okay. Um, and my other question on, I, I noticed in one of these slides, it's not relevant which one it is, but I know that you had said that uh, we've already calculated in the uh, adjustments to ASRS and PSPRS. Uh, what did we, um, what are we anticipating as uh, a drop in our uh, funded, our funded amount for ASRS and PSPRS and what annual impact is that gonna have on the budget? for each respective uh, retirement fund. So Mayor and Council Member Whitaker, I don't have with me the funded and an unfunded liability numbers or any recalculations of those. Um, I believe those would come from PSPRS. I can tell you what we've included in our budget, in the budget for 2021 costs. We have included in an increase in both fire and police for, for public safety uh, pension retirement system. The fire is going from a 56% to a 58.4% rate and the police is going from a 56% rate to a 60.1% rate. And that's what we've included in our 2021 uh, adopted budget. Again, we'll continue to look at that as we go through. We're very, we're usually pretty conservative as we forecast out for the future years um, on what those rates are. Um, I apologize, Candice, I'm not, I'm not following. So we went, we're going from, uh, Help me understand that that impact. I, I'm not understanding what you mean when you say you're going from 56 to 58. So, for example, for on fire and medical, their current uh, rate is 56 percent. So, for every dollar, 56 cents goes to pension, and that's changing from 56 to 58.4. So, that's an increase of 2.3. I don't mean percentage, but percentage points. So, they've added 2.3 percent on top of that. Uh, police went up 4.1 percent on the rates. So uh, I just want to make sure I'm understanding correctly. So if we uh, if we hired um, a, a firefighter, the assumption would be that we pay for every dollar we spend last year it would be 56 cents that you'd have to add on to that. And our projection is now that that's going to go up to 58 cents. And then for police, it's going to go from an assumption of 56 cents per dollar to 60 cents per dollar for 
for every, uh, and not just hired employees, but I assume all existing employees uh, as well. Is that, am I understanding correctly? That is correct. And what are, what are we anticipating on, um, you know, if you look at the balance sheet of ASRS, they were heavily invested in equities. Are we making any assumption in regards to what's going to happen to ASRS or are we uh, not, not diving into that at this point? Uh, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, for ASRS, it's a very minimal change. We're only going from a 12.1% to a 12.2%, so it's relatively insignificant over the total course of all the people that we employ. And does that take into any assumptions, their balance sheet, that uh, loss of uh, money or funded uh, on the equity side, or, or are we have to wait to receive that report from them before we actually make those assumptions? Right. Uh, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, the... Those are, um, there's two things to think about for that. One, we have looked at what those, right, those increases are going to be and, and things that we've heard so far. And the second one is anytime they do changes, for example, on PSPRS, um, if their investments don't bring in the money that they anticipated, we don't receive that impact in one year. It'll, they'll actually spread that out over seven years, so we won't feel the rates all in one year. So we'll know that that's coming as it goes forward. So we'll know more information later when they pull out the full reports, um, but that's usually what they do is they take that, any type of a loss, and they spread that out over seven years so that it doesn't impact the cities all in one year. We don't basically follow the ebb and flow of their stocks. Um, we, it, it's, it's spread out. I understand. Um, I'll wrap it up. I have one last two questions. Innovation Studios, I believe, is what that building is called in our IT building, right? Is that uh, which fund are we spending that money? For? Where is that coming from? And is it still on the budget as it sits today? Uh, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, it is on the in the budget. It's in the Economic Investment Fund, and that money is um, sitting in there. So again, that money is in the Economic Investment Fund at this point uh, through transfers, and it is uh, available for that project. Okay. And on the ASU campus, we're still, I assume that's still in this budget as well. It is. That is in also in the Economic Investment Fund, as well as represented in um, debt service in the general fund. Uh, sorry, I'm not following. Uh, we have two. The debt service is coming. There are two, uh, Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, there are two sources of funding for the ASU project or the downtown project. And one is the Economic Investment Fund where we're using cash on the project that was used for the design as well as some of the construction. Um, the remainder of the construction is from excise tax bond and that's being paid for through the general fund as debt service. Got it. And the Economic Investment Fund source is the uh, utility revenue transfer, I'm assuming, right? That's where the source of that money comes from. Uh, Mayor and Councilman Whitaker, it is. it was. It is no longer. So going forward, as of July 1st, the source of that funding is the general fund. Uh, after which fiscal year? Starting in fiscal year 2021, as per the ordinance that was adopted by council. So the fiscal year 1920 fiscal year is the final year or the last year that would have a transfer coming from the enterprise fund that has utilities in it over into the economic investment fund. As effective uh, fiscal year 2021, all transfers into the economic investment fund will come from the general fund. I got it. I don't have any other questions. I just would like to request item 8A uh, be removed from uh, consent agenda moving into our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Item 8A will be removed from the consent agenda for our next meeting. Uh, referring to the slide that Jeremy brought up, the slide 18, I think that this is the, the structural imbalance that I was talking about earlier, where it, it really, I know that, that those lines are going to be uh, closed given the budget reductions that have not occurred yet. But I, I still, to me, I think, you know, there, there's two ways to, to do that. One is to, to reduce the budget, which I know we're doing. Another way would be to increase revenues. And that, that's where I'm, I'm wondering, I'd, I'd like to maybe see, see us spend a little more time uh, uh, talking about ways that we can activate maybe some of the underperforming commercial areas that we have in our city, how we can uh, collect more sales tax, uh, how we can sell more utilities, you know, how, how we can uh, uh, 
uh, you know, in addition to tightening our belts, also attract more revenue into the city. Um, but uh, that's something that I'll, I'll talk with the staff on uh, going forward. But, you know, I, I think uh, just re thinking that budget reductions are the only way to, to, to close those lines, I think, is, is only half of the equation. Uh, all right, this does not require any action, Council. So are there any other comments or questions before we move on? Yes, uh, Council Member Duff. I hate to extend this, but um, on slide number 22 on the wastewater, I'm just wondering why the influx of the loss um, for the 2021 fiscal year, the projected budget. So Mayor, Council Member Duff, the the increase is due to the allocation of the uh, transfer uh, to the general fund for the public safety and general use, that 30%. So previously it was allocated a different way, but now with the new ordinance, it is 30% of the revenues, of, uh, of the revenues uh, for each individual utility. So with that calculation now, now they, the, uh, their net sources and uses have uh, increased, but the the water has now decreased. So there, it was more heavily, previously it was more heavily that transfer was allocated to water than wastewater, but now with the allocation of the 30% of each individual utility's revenues, now that has switched to wastewater. I see, thank you. I got a question on that, if I may. Why does that not continue into the future uh, forecast for 21 to 24? I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Mayor Councilmember Whitaker. When you say, "Why does that not continue?" Which line are you looking at? Are you talking about the? Sorry, Jen had wastewater? Jen had asked about the 2021 wastewater, and it's a uh, 18. Correct. I assume that's in thousands, so 18 million dollar uh, transfer. But then in the subsequent years, it decreases to 10 million. So if it's 30 percent of the revenues every year, why does it almost have as you move forward into future years? So Mayor and Councilmember Whitaker, that's not the transfer dollar amount. That's the net sources and uses, which includes everything. It includes their expenditures. It includes their debt service. That's just the net. We're just saying that the large um, contributing factor that changed between last year and this year is the allocation of that transfer. The that's, big, that's not the yeah. transfer. The biggest item hitting that is the debt service, debt service that's being impacted. We just completed some of the largest wastewater treatment facilities we've ever built. And so you're now seeing that debt service payment hitting those utilities and that's that's why that's driving a lot of that net the negative on the net sources and uses and that's why we'll have to keep talking about you know how like the mayor said how do we increase the volume of sales um, to, to help bring more revenues in to offset those costs I got it thanks okay thank you council any other discussion on on this item all right, thank you very much. Um, next item on our agenda for this meeting is item three, current event summary and reports on meetings and conferences attended. I know uh, there's been a lot going on. Who uh, would like to start? Mr. Thompson. Yeah, I'd just like to mention, Mayor, that we're having a drive through food drive on May 13th at the uh, uh, Eastmark Great Park. Uh, from eight to noon, it's uh, at the locations on the section of the park along East Mark Parkway. Again, that's uh, on May 13th at the Great Park in East Mark uh, from eight to noon. Thank you. I know I, that there's, uh, going forward, I know we, we, we kicked off the, the canned food drive last Saturday. Mr. Luna was out at uh, the uh, Red Mountain Malta Gen Center. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna ask him to talk about that, but. I think we've got uh, upcoming uh, food drives in all of the districts here in the next uh, few weeks. But uh, Mr. Luna, why don't you uh, talk about what happened last Saturday? Sure, uh, yes, uh, Saturday we had the food drive over to Red Mountain Multi Generation Center. We uh, had a good turnout of people. And so I appreciate Mark Hirschberg and his staff for assisting in that food drive and getting food uh, to uh, many of our nonprofits as well as our, our food providers. Midwest and I think the United Food Bank were part of that. Also last Thursday, I was a panelist at our newly formed Business Alliance webinar, along with my um, 
co-founder, and that is Natasha Vanda Karachi. And uh, we had a good turnout. It was exciting. A lot of conversation relative to how we can we can assist our small businesses in Northeast Mesa. I want to thank uh, Sally from the Chamber as well as uh, Bill and Jay from Economic Development for supporting our efforts and providing some leadership and some important tips on how businesses can um, navigate through this pandemic. Uh, and certainly we're going to talk about the, the CARES Act and how we can support our small businesses. Uh, I also attended a Food Truck Friday event, but it was actually a food collection event supporting United Food. And there were a number of residents in Northeast Mesa that provided food items to that. And uh, just continue doing a lot of Facebook Live uh, presentations in Espanol. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Luna. And, I, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you and, and Council Member Heredia are doing another uh, uh, broadcast Thursday. Frankie, do you want to talk about that one? Yes. Uh, so we have a, a digital summit, like uh, the ones that you've been launching, Mayor, uh, that talks about our small businesses. So uh, go on uh, Mesa Espanol uh, uh, at 2 p.m. and uh, we'll have a Facebook Live uh, and Channel 11 as well in Spanish for our small businesses uh, in Mesa. Great, thank you for doing that. Uh, let's go, Mr. Thompson, and then uh, Council Member Dell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I had a uh, town hall, a virtual town hall uh, meeting last week um, with Kenny Klaus and his team, and um, had a really great turnout. We had over 300 people, uh, 300 views on YouTube so far. Um, and the number keeps increasing. So it was a great opportunity to talk about the economic development and things that are happening in District 6. And I uh, had a lot of questions on projects uh, from across the district from residents, um, either uh, either live or, or through messaging. So um, I'm looking forward to working with Kenny Klaus and, and uh, his group and his team on doing these, uh, hopefully every couple of months. A good way to uh, communicate with our constituents. Thank you. Uh, Jen. Um, yes, last Thursday we had a digital summit with the mayor on the downtown activation that's going on. And starting this Wednesday, we have family takeout night in downtown Mesa, a number of participating restaurants. You can find more about that online at visit There's a section for um, family night takeout night in conjunction with a art project that the Mesa Art Center is putting together called Together in the Desert for um, art projects that the families can do together, contribute to a larger project. There's prizes and things that can be won. So to uh, please uh, check out visitmesa.com. And today is Star Wars Day, and we're using that as a way to promote the filling out and sending in your census or going online and filling out your census. May the force be with you. There are some prizes involved. Um, all the council members are, I've seen quite a few videos online of um, how you can participate at mesaaz.gov backslash um, mashup, I think it is. But anyway, it's on my Facebook page as well as uh, the other council members. And I'm wearing my historic preservation uh, Mesa's Historic Preservation T-shirt today in recognition of May being Historic Preservation Month, and we'll be doing a proclamation on that later. Yep. Great. Thank you. Council, uh, yes, Mr. Freeman. Mayor, uh, District 1 has a food drive like Council Member Thompson talked about, and it'll be this Wednesday at Sloan Park Riverview from 8 a.m. to noon, so we're inviting uh, everyone to come out and bring uh, canned food as well as non-perishable items. Again, 8 a.m. to noon this Wednesday at Sloan Park. Thank you. Great, thanks. Look forward to seeing you there. Okay, Council, anything else you'd like to talk about under this agenda item? Okay, uh, Mr. Brady, what does our schedule of future meetings look like? Mayor, we'll see you on uh, this Thursday morning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I don't, we're not going to log off of this uh, Zoom call and come back for the next meeting, are we? I don't think that's necessary, Mayor. Yeah, I don't either. Okay. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Would someone like to thank you, Mr. Freeman and Mr. Thompson? 
All in favor, uh, please unmute your microphones and please uh, uh, say if you're in favor of uh, adjournment. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Thank you. Uh, we will adjourn our study session. And uh, I think we'll just be quiet because we have to roll the